Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome, and welcome to worship tonight at Zion Lippi United Church of Christ, whether you are here with us in the sanctuary or you have joined us uh, from your homes or wherever you may be traveling, we thank you all for taking some time to be with us here this evening. It's a joy and it's an honor and it's a pleasure to gather with you in this space at this time and in this moment to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We truly hope that tonight's gathering will be one that will be filled with reflections, thoughts, and excitement around this birth. Would you please join with me in prayer? Dear eternal God, my heart aches from grief and loss, this prayer written by Miss Carol Jo Draghi. I wonder how I'll be able to endure the trials that seem to come increasing frequency. I can only hold on to the hope that as you have been faithful in your caring for me throughout the past, you will be today and tomorrow also. May I feel your love always flowing around me. No matter what, I will continue to praise you with everything I am. It's in the name of Jesus our Savior, whose birth we celebrate tonight. Amen.
Over the past weeks of this Advent season, we've been lighting Advent candles. A candle of hope, a candle of peace, a candle of love, and a candle of joy. Tonight, we're honored to be able to light the Christ candle, and so I would like to invite the Hanheisen family to come forward to light our Advent candles along with our Christ candle this evening. Tonight, tonight, as we prepare to celebrate that which we have been waiting for once again, the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, we honor this moment which, which, with a reading from the Gospel of John, John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He has, or he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made without him. Nothing was made that has been made. In him, in him was life, and that life was the light of all, all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We give thanks for the light of hope, unrelenting and inexplicable. Our hope is in Christ, our hope in Christ shines on. We give thanks for the light of peace, strong and unafraid. The peace of Christ lights our way. We give thanks for the light of love, unconditional and holy. The love of Christ comforts and challenges. We give thanks for the light of joy, persistent and unpredictable. The joy of Christ brightens our lives. And now we light the Christ candle as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Thank you, God, for lighting, for your light in this world through Jesus Christ. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. God of all light, we come before you in many ways, bruised, broken, and cracked apart. Thank you for shining your light into these cracks, bringing your healing presence to our deepest need. We know that in your, our lives and in this world, there is still great darkness. Help us see the darkness for what it is and to shine the light of our hope, peace and love or, and joy wherever it may be needed the most. Guide us into the places in which you need us the most that we may live as lanterns for your light. And may we be reminded that the light of the world is first revealed in the humble simplicity of a child who we are now compelled to receive in childlike faith. In the name of your newborn son, we pray, amen.
this afternoon, I had an opportunity to talk with an old friend of mine. Uh, his name is Tom. Uh, not that anybody here has ever traveled in Nebraska or ever wanted to go to Nebraska or ever sat down and said, Honey, you know what? Summer vacation's coming about. And we've never been in Nebraska. What do you say we go? Um, Tom lives in Lincoln, Nebraska. And for those that know him there, he's Reverend Tom. And he is the uh, pastor that I first served with and really was my mentor into the ministry. And so as I was visiting with Tom this afternoon, we were reminiscing about old times and times in which we would leave the office and he would always want to go to Dairy Queen and I would say, no, we shouldn't go to Dairy Queen. And he would say, I'm your mentor, I am your elder, we have to go to Dairy Queen and Jeff, you must, if you're going to be ordained, eat the large blizzard. It's just mandatory. And so I would. And we talked about life as a pastor. We talked about life in the ministry. He talked about baptizing our children. And we talked about what it means to participate in the sacraments like we are this evening. When we prepare to take in this bread and this wine and share it together, it helps us to recall all that has happened to bring us to a moment like this. The commitment of so many people throughout the generations to bring themselves to serve in a capacity that can be incredibly challenging at times. To serve as volunteers and to serve as disciples in a world in which it can be difficult to serve tonight we celebrate the beginning of another mentor for all of us, Jesus himself, who taught us that loving God and loving neighbor are two of the most incredible things that you can do. And so as we prepare tonight to remember what took place all those generations ago as a result of Jesus' life and commitment as he answered his calling in ministry, we celebrate tonight the beginning of that in his birth. As we prepare to share in the bread and share in the wine, these most familiar words. This is the body of Christ which has been broken for you. When you take and when you eat of it, do so remembering him and do so now. Mary could not have known what the journey of her son would behold, but we know. We've heard the stories. We've talked about it. We've prayed about it. And so tonight, as we prepare to drink this wine, we do so remembering Jesus Christ, the one born this evening, whose blood was shed for each of you. Take and drink, remembering him.
Dear gracious Lord, the one that we come tonight to celebrate, the one that we come tonight to remember, and the one who has inspired us to go and to do likewise, we thank you for providing us with such a beautiful sanctuary. We thank you for providing us with such wonderful opportunities to worship together in so many ways. Bless us and guide us as we move forward in your name. Amen. I invite you as you are able to stand as we sing together, Joy to the World. Please be seated. I want to read for you our first passage of Scripture tonight. It comes from the Gospel of Luke, and it speaks of and announces the birth of Jesus. Luke, Luke writes this. At the time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judah, David's ancient home. He traveled from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Here ends our first reading tonight, and we follow that with a prayer written by Miss Sandy Willett, which reads this way. Dear Heavenly Father, there are times in our lives when we should have faith in you like Mary and Joseph. Please be with us during those times and let us know that you are always with us and give us courage. We pray for those who are not with us tonight, those who cannot 
be with their families for Christmas and those who are struggling with challenges. Life can be so hard. So please wrap your loving arms around them and give them strength. We thank you for giving us your son. As we can get wrapped up in all the busy activities at this time of the year, please remind us that Jesus is the real reason for Christmas. We pray in his name. Amen. Choir, please come. Reading from Luke as we continue the story and then following that with a prayer from one of our confirmants, Chloe, the gospel writer of Luke shares these words. That night there were shepherds staying in fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. 
You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is well pleased. Praying with me, please. Dear Lord, Chloe writes, On this Christmas Eve, we gather in homes and in churches to celebrate the birth of your son. But we also pause to remember all those who cannot gather in their homes because of the recent tornadoes in Kentucky and beyond. May your Christmas spirit bring hope to wherever it is needed and wherever anyone is gathered. On this Christmas Eve, I'm thankful for my family, friends, and I hope that everyone here in church or at home has a great Christmas and a happy new year. Amen. Let's sing together the first Noel. Would you please stand? Please remain standing. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let us go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village. They found Mary. They found Joseph. And there was a baby lying in a manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and all that they had seen. It was just as the angel had told them, let us sing together away in a manger.
nice. Please be seated. To you is born this day in the city of David the Messiah, who is the Lord. Those are the words we hear. Those are the words that bring us to this point, and those are the words that compel us to be here on an evening such as this. Jesus was a great teacher. People that taught Jesus were great teachers. Great teachers find creative ways to teach important and complicated truths. A chemistry teacher that I know teaches her science class by having her students cook Thanksgiving dinner, which gives her an excuse to point out what heat and cold do to molecules and how chemicals determine the taste of particular foods. I have a friend who says he teaches fractions and percentages to his children by calculating their favorite baseball players' batting averages. If Bryce Harper goes two for five on Friday night, one for four on Saturday, and one for three on Sunday, what's his batting average over the weekend? I have no idea. I didn't figure that out. <laughs> I dropped that class. Christmas time and worship services like this can be a time in which we hear the same stories, the same hymns, the same traditions, but how we hear and think about those stories and how familiar they are doesn't have to remain constant. If we change how we hear the message, for example, if we change how we listen to the message of Christmas, it has the potential to rekindle a spirit that we might have felt like we didn't feel as strongly as we once did. Anybody here seen the movie Elf? Yeah. Anybody here like the movie Elf? Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, me too. Me too. In the movie Elf, there's a moment in which Santa's sleigh is not registering enough Christmas spirit, and it begins to lose power and thrust, and it ultimately crashes into Central Park. I believe life sometimes has the potential to steal that magic of Christmas from us as well, just like Santa's sleigh. To take it and remove it, and in some cases, like tonight, it might feel like just another night. Christmas might feel like it's just too much work, too much effort. And the story that compels us to be here this evening, when we hear it, sounds antiquated, uninspiring, lacks life, lacks the energy that it once had. But I wish you could stand where I am. And I wish you could see the congregation from my perspective on this Christmas Eve. Some of you are wearing suit coats you haven't put on since last Christmas. And when you slipped that thing on tonight, you were ready to button it up, and you were like, oh, Lord, I had some cookies. Mmm, that China buffet's been delicious, but this suit coat no longer quite goes shut. But what I see is anticipation, and I see hope, and I see peace, and I see love, and I see joy. And it begins with the anticipation of gifts and reunions and jingle bells. And it has the potential to take us back to those days when everything seemed like magic. When we didn't know how to judge. We didn't know that other people were poor. Alabama has a great song for those of you that remember Alabama. I don't know. Anybody still have a cassette tape of Alabama? <laughs> Somebody told us Wall Street fell, but we were too poor, that we were so poor that we couldn't tell. Great line. We loved each new day, and we just loved spending time with friends. And that's something that I've always loved about dogs. Do we have any dog lovers here tonight? If you're a dog lover here tonight, raise your hand really high, real, real high. Any cat lovers here tonight, raise your hands. Okay, there's some cat lovers. Everybody boo. Go ahead. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No booing tonight. Stop. No. 
dogs have a little bit different personality than cats, don't they? Yeah, dogs, dogs don't have a whole lot of inhibitions when they feel something. You know what they feel, you know what they're thinking, you know what they want, and you know how they want it. Dogs accept others completely, no questions. Just best friends like that, and they're totally in, completely bought in. And when something's tragic, and when something's sad, and there's no reason to hide it, it's just how they feel in that moment, and we all know how that can feel. Take this clip, for example, that expresses that sadness that a dog might have over the loss of its owner. We miss her too. No. It's so sad. They don't care, right? It's what I feel, and it's how I feel, and it's what I'm feeling in the moment. Take that clip, and let's look at some dogs at a dog daycare that get to choose their own Christmas gifts. And as you see these dogs making their way about the room, finding their gift, what do you see them doing once they find it? Playing with it, right? What else are they doing with it? Chewing on it. Are they fighting over it? No, no, they're not. They're just completely happy and content that they have the opportunity to pick a toy. To live not just with hope and peace and love and joy, but to live with true hope, true peace, true love, and true joy that compels us to be so thankful for each and every day, each precious moment, every incredible relationship, every laugh, every smile, every hug, every cry, every wag of the tail, every new beginning. So go with me now. Let's transport ourselves to the night of Christmas Eve in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And a young boy is growing skeptical about the existence of Santa Claus. And somehow, and in some way, sees a steam hauled train named what? Anybody remember? I can't hear anybody. I'm standing all the way up here. Anybody in the balcony know what this is? Well, the balcony's dead. They're all up there. They're like, we don't know what's going on down there, but it's certainly not going to happen up here, right? Keep it in order. It's the Polar Express, and it stops outside his home. And the conductor of the train claims that it's on its way to the North Pole. And a journey that's not soon forgotten begins. And all the way along on this journey, anticipation grows. Excitement builds. And like the dog's unconditional nature, like the magic of a newborn baby on Christmas Eve in a manger, the spirit of Christmas is recovered anew, fresh, shiny, amazing. And this Christmas spirit is not only soul felt, but it can be heard in the jingling of sleigh bells. But in the Polar Express, not everybody can hear them. Not everybody can hear the bell. You can only hear the bell if you what? If you only believe in Christmas. So I ask you tonight, can you still hear the sleigh bells? Or have they started to fade? Are you all in on Christmas? Or has your spirit begun to wait a little bit? I love this. Let's have kids like this many kids every week, okay? If we're being honest, we've probably felt like all of those things at various times. But tonight, this night, this very night, 
this special, incredible, amazing, awesome, anticipatory night. The bells are ringing. They cannot be silenced. For tonight, to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, and the bells are ringing. And it's been another year. And there are some broken hearts sitting in this congregation tonight. There are some broken hearts that have gathered in their homes, around their computers, wherever they may be. And we understand that and we honor that. We completely embrace that. There's some sad spirits. There's some disappointed hopes. There's been some broken dreams. But in the midst of all of that stuff comes a ringing bell. The ringing of hope. The ringing of peace. The ringing of joy. For on this night, this very night, we set it aside and we celebrate that Jesus is born and the beginning of the rest of our lives starts now. And it starts tomorrow. And it starts the next day. And our next chapters are open to us. Christmas offers everyone that opportunity. And it's up to us to decide if we will receive this newborn child that appeared if we hear the bells ringing, if we believe, and it all came all those generations ago, it all came upon a midnight clear. Would you please join with me as we sing together, singing that hymn. be seated. We come to a time in this worship service which sets this apart in a way from others. In a number of ways, not only are we celebrating Christmas and the birth of Jesus and what that means to all of us, we're going to introduce fire into the sanctuary. <laughs> and so uh, we ask you to uh, be as safe as possible. Um, and so what we will do is there will be council members coming around um, and lighting candles. As you go to light your candle off someone else's candle, I would invite you to remember that if you have a lit candle, simply hold your candle upright and let the unlit candle light off of your candle. So 
Wax doesn't drip onto someone's hand or anything like that. The lights in the sanctuary uh, will be extinguished, and so the only lights that you will see are on the Christmas tree and in the windows and up on the screen as we prepare to light our candles on this most incredible of nights. We sing together silently. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God. 
and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him. And nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was crafted and created. And his life brought light to everyone. This light shines in the darkness. And the darkness can never extinguish it. A prayer written by Brock Henheisen, another one of our compliments. Dear God, thank you for another Christmas Eve gathering and that our church was able to be together. Not everyone is here with us in the sanctuary, but in our thoughts and prayers, everyone is together. With all the hustle and bustle of life, one thing remains constant, and that is you. Thank you for all you have done for us and teach each and every day throughout the year. We offer this prayer in the name of the one born to us, and together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you would kindly extinguish your candles. And I would invite the choir to come forward.
Thank you very much. As the choir is exiting, one of the... Yep, go ahead. Exit. Yep, get out of here, choir. Move along. <laughs> Before you bring all the kids up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, people got gifts to open, so make it quick. Well, just so you know I was listening, I got a quiz for you on fractions. <laughs> no, no. Can everybody hear me? Okay. All right. So, on behalf of the congregation, yep. it's my honor and my privilege to present you and your family with a little Christmas gift. All right. Does it jingle? Nope. I'm Brian the Elf, not Buddy the Elf. <laughs> That's right. So, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. You got it. Thank so. you. Thank you. I want to say thank you to Carol Joe and to Sandy and all the choir. You don't get to see them all the time unless you're sitting up in the balcony, but Greg and Jonathan, Kyle, who takes care of the sound, thank you all for helping make everything happen tonight. And now if there are any children here, any child at all that would like to come forward, I got something for you tonight. If you want, if you're feeling like a child now, if you've come on, come on, big guy. Yeah, let's. Anybody, if you're in the balcony, if you're in the back of the church, if you're in the front of the church, wherever you may be, just come on down. I'd love to have a moment with you. Look at you. You're beautiful. All right. All right. Do you want to sit down? You want to stand? You don't want to sit? You want to stand? Okay, you can stand. You do whatever you want. It's Christmas Eve. It's my gift to you. All right, you can have a seat. If you want to sit in the seat, you can grab the seat. But you're going to have to hand me something when I want it. Who here likes to sing? Who here likes to sing? Yeah, because we're, I'm, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. So I'm, I'm going to do something for you. And then I want you to do something for me. And that something for me is singing. And it's an easy song to sing. As a matter of fact, you're even going to see all the words on the screen, and everybody in the congregation is, is, is going to see the words on the screen also. So we're going to sing it together up here to everyone. But before we get there, come on, big guys, look at you. I was wondering if you were coming down. Good to see you. Who here is happy that it's Christmas? If you're happy that it's Christmas, clap your hands. All right, if you're happy that Santa crossed the Atlantic, Clap your hands. If you're happy that Jesus was born on this evening, clap your hands. If you're happy that the worship service is just about over so you can go home and maybe open gifts, clap your hands. What's one of the favorite things about Christmas that you like? What do you like? Okay, you got Jesus at church. What else? It's, I got gotcha. you. What else do you like? Getting presents. What do you like? What he said. What do you like? You forgot already. Okay. What do you like, Mr. I want to stand, man? You like toys. You like toys. What do you like? Spend time with your family. Yep. You see that bag under there? Can you hand it to me, Tyson? Now, I know. what do you like? Spending time with your family and opening presents. Yes, ma'am. You like some bells. Now, I understand that some of you know what Polar Express is from earlier in the service, right? And, and... I forgot to ask you, if you like the Polar Express, clap your hands. Yeah. So this, these are jingle bells, okay? Everybody up here is going to get some jingle bells. Would you like some jingle bells? Here. All right. Make sure you have some, some jingle. Are you sure you can hear the bells jingling? Can you hear the bells jingling? Here you go. Make sure we get some back there. Does every, oops, make sure they get handed back there. Here you go, here you go. Here you go. Hand them out for me back there, will you? Yeah, hand, hand some out back there. Well, here you go, big guy. 
here you go. Okay, here you go. Hey, here you go. Do you like one? Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you. There you go. How many do we have left? Can I have? Did somebody get two? There you go. I just want to make sure I have enough. That. Do you have one? Do you have one? How many are left in here? All right, there you, get a, you get a couple extras. I have a couple extras. Would anybody? Well, there you, okay. Woo! All right. It's Christmas time in the city. All right. Does everybody have bells in the balcony? Shh, 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 shh. One second. One second. One second. Hold on a second. Shh, 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 shh. Just. Shh. I want to make sure that we can hear the bell. No, 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 no. Can you hear the bells ringing? Shh. Can you hear those bells ringing? Yeah. Ring your bells. Ring your bells. Ring your bells. Ring your bells. Can you hear the bells ringing? Excellent. We will close this gathering by singing together. We wish you a Merry Christmas. I and the children will lead you along. I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful evening. I hope that your gathering here this evening has meant something to you and that it's brought a little bit of spirit of Christmas into your heart, into your soul, into whatever it, it may be, and that you go forth sharing that same joy. Let's stand and sing together. We wish you a Merry Christmas. S stand up with me.